Oh dear colleagues, uh, good morning and let me present you the talk about the Pyrus problem, the quorum analysis of the Pyrus problem. So the problem is as follows. You are the captain of uh, the Pyrus crew, which consists of N members. Uh, all Pyrus are linearly ordered, so every pirate have his deputy except for the junior. Uh, you, you have some uh, decent sum of money, sufficiently large, and you offer a share to be approved by some fraction of the crew. The fraction is uh, denoted by Q. If at least um, this fraction of pirates approve your of offer, then fine. If not, then you are expelled, your deputy becomes uh, a new captain and offers his own share under the same conditions. So uh, your aim is to remain your position as a captain and spend uh, as little money as possible. Uh, each pilot follows uh, his own profit, but if uh, it's uh, all the same, they can vote as they please. So the problem is very well known for uh, Q 0 0.5. So if uh, at least one half of the crew is for the share, then it's fine. In the popular math, it's often considered for five parts. Uh, in the book by Moulin, it is solved for a bit very large and uh, Q on top. Uh, we found one source where uh, the problem was considered for uh, greater Q, which read uh, strictly more than one half, so one half plus delta, but only for uh, limited crew, five pairs. And we found no consideration of this problem for uh, arbitrary conditions for any Q and for any Q size. So the main, the main results are the following. So uh, the crew is divided into several categories. Some pirates are often offered nothing, others are often offered one coin, maybe two coins, and uh, some pirates are either offered something or nothing, depending on the captain's chips. And uh, it's quite weird that uh, the captain has some choice even if the Q is very high. So for instance, if you need 90% of the crew to approve your offer, uh, you still can choose this one or this one to offer something. And uh, another unexpected result is uh, that the individual payoff remains limited. So even for large two sides, asymptotically limited. So for instance, if you have, if you need 90% of uh, the crew to approve, so you don't pay more than 10 or 11 coins to each captain, no matter how large the crew is. And also uh, the range of possible uh, quorums from zero to one is separated into intervals. And within each interval, the payoff pattern is constant. So for instance, from uh, one half to 0 0.6, uh, this payoff pattern is the same, only the number of uh, pirates to be chosen is different. So for instance, for 0 0.5, you need to choose one out of three, and for 0 0.6, you need to ch choose all three of them, something like that. So let us consider the classical problem first. Uh, so you need at least one half of the crew to approve your offer. The problem is solved by induction, because <clears throat> uh, if uh, the crew consists only of you and the other guy, uh, you are the one, the one half. So you take everything to yourself and offer nothing to your partner. So for three uh, members, uh, the junior one can't hold for, for anything, so he will be happy offered one coin. So you give one coin to him and that's it. So the payoff pattern is uh, like this. It depends on uh, parity. 
So on divisibility on two, and let us see the nose capital. So you pay one coin to odd members and take the rest. So uh, if uh, Q is lower than one half, it's quite clear because uh, the pay payoff pattern remains the same, only you can choose some of the guys and pay offer them one coin and the others are offered nothing. And it is uh, oh, quite obvious. However, if the quorum is even lower, so one three, one third or below, uh, the pattern is uh, different the captain has even more freedom to, to choose. So it's like this, and this is uh, easily proved by induction. So uh, a more interesting case is uh, high quorum. So when you need uh, more than one half to approve your offer. So it turns out that, that uh, it, within, within this region, so from, from one half to 0 0.6, including 0 0.6, the uh, payoff pattern is the same. Uh, for two pirates, the pirates, the captain needs to offer everything to the junior because he needs his vote without any possibilities. So E means everything. But for three, the junior can be offered nothing and it's, it's fine. Uh, for four members, one pirate needs to be offered two coins because uh, the captain needs to guarantee his vote. He can uh, count on one coin anyway, so you offer two coins to be sure. So, and, uh, and so on. Uh, note that uh, if the size is seven, you can choose one out of two possible pirates because you do not need two additional votes on the one and you have two additional crew members so you can choose and for larger and you have more question marks in the pattern so you always have some choice uh, the underlined uh, case of five uh, crew members is the strict uh, strict case because this works for 0 0.6 uh, for higher q this this won't do so that's why the interval ends at 0 0.6 and then by induction you can continue and get this payoff pattern which now depends on divisibility on three and uh, the maximum individual pay is two coins so you uh, pay zero one either two or nothing zero one either two or nothing and so on and you can uh, trace that uh, each pattern is transformed to the next one if you add one crew member. The next interval is from 0 0.6 to 0, 0 0.625. And it is slightly different. If we trace uh, the beginning, this looks like that. Uh, sometimes you need to pay three coins because uh, these pirates can <coughs> rely on two anyway. So you need to give them more, but later you can give them uh, not more than two. So for uh, high enough crew size, you can pay not more than two coins. <clears throat> the pattern also depends on divisibility on three. So the maximum pay, pay off is two coins, but uh, the pattern is slightly different as you can see. So for even higher, uh, quorum from uh, 0 0.625 to two thirds, uh, the pattern depends on divisibility on four. And this looks like that. And it's uh, traced quite in the same way. So you begin with uh, several n up to seven or eight, maybe like that. And then you see the, the pattern and prove it by induction. And also you always have these question marks, so you always have some freedom to choose from. Now what is considered the most uh, difficult case if the quorum is more than two thirds. Uh, here we need an additional assumption because for the first few uh, 
cases of very small crews, you need to offer everything to the junior and other crew members must approve that because if you are expelled, they will face the same problem. So let's consider the sim simple example of uh, two thirds plus delta. So when you need exactly more than two thirds of the crew. So you give everything in case of uh, three to, to the junior because you need his vote anyway. Uh, but then you can give him nothing and uh, the number of payoff to these guys <coughs> grows. It grows <coughs> and uh, you can expect that it would grow, but no, uh, it will not. For uh, beginning from n equal to 10, you can give uh, nothing to three, to three crew members. One of them is your deputy who is uh, never happy and you can give nothing to these ones. And let us trace further. You can give nothing to them. Then you can punish other. And uh, it, it, the payoff, payoff pattern depends on divisibility on four. And you do not pay more than three coins. It's quite weird, in my opinion, because you need to bribe many crew members, but you can uh, do with not more than three points to each. So also know that uh, if you give something to four question marks, uh, you will have 75% of the crew, but you need only 67%. So you always have some freedom. And this is uh, true for any queue. So if you want 99% of the crew, you still will have some freedom to choose at least uh, if the crew size is sufficiently large. The um, maximum individual payoff is uh, bounded by this expression, y minus two in inverse. So if you need 90%, it will be 10 or 11 coins, uh, no matter how large the crew is. So uh, the, the pattern I showed uh, is valid up to 0.7. And then there is another segment, another, another, and they condense near one. They become shorter, but well. uh, for any screw size and for any quorum queue, you can get a payoff pattern and it will be stable, at least within some perturbations. Also, there are critical values of Q, which are one third, one half, and so on where the individual payoff jumps. But we, between them, they, it is uh, linear, quite stable. So uh, this problem is quite academical, but uh, it uh, also has, has some applications. For instance, in volunteer computing. Imagine a volunteer computing project where the participants are ranged according to their contribution, the effective contribution. And uh, that one who has contributed most shares some kind of values. And uh, we are not able to expect that uh, he would share fairly because, well, I have just spoken about uh, he will not. He will take most of the stuff to himself. So all this is valid uh, provided that the uh, shared <coughs> treasure is high enough. But uh, now we can see that uh, the sense of this high enough is quite clear. So, um, <coughs> we can estimate uh, the amount of the money paid to each member. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Please ask the questions to the speaker.
Okay, uh, you have presented uh, several cases for different in intervals, uh, 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 several cases which corresponds for different interval for the cube. And uh, how do you decide what interval to choose? For example, uh, you had a case uh, for the cube from uh, a half to 0 0.6. Why 0 0.6, not uh, 0 0.55 or uh, 65. Uh, when you decide uh, how, you, uh, how you decide when you choose to change your partner. So, so uh, when we uh, are solving the problem for uh, 0 0.5 plus uh, delta, so more than one half, we get a, uh, a pattern. And this pattern uh, is uh, valid for higher Q up to 0 0.6. And uh, as, as I have told, 0 0.6 is strict here. Because for this size of five fighters, uh, this payoff is not valid for more than 0 0.6. Because you don't have enough walls here. So it's valid only for 0 0.6, this uh, theorem. For higher Q, the, the payoff is uh, different, shown here. And we can prove that uh, it, it breaks uh, at this value for more than 0 0.625. So it's a theorem that uh, the payoff pattern is uh, valid in the interval between two critical values. Any more questions? Okay, if no questions, then let's thank the speaker again.